In this video, we will look at how we can use Falco to investigate alerts in a Kubernetes cluster. If I look at the nodes in this cluster, it has three nodes and Falco is installed in cluster one worker one. So there seems to be some issues. So let's go in and uh, look at the Falco logs. So I'm going to SSH into the cluster. And once I'm inside, let me check if Falco is running. So you can see Falco is running and uh, usually Falco runs as a service. I can check that by running systemctl status Falco. So this is just confirming to me that there is a unit file for Falco and it is running as a service. And it also gives me the logs that are generated by Falco in the last 30 seconds. So I can look at logs from this or I can use the journal CTL command. So let me use the journal CTL command, I'm giving the unit name as Falco and I'm going to get the logs for the last 60 seconds. So you can do that with dash S and you can specify the time, which is 60 seconds. So this will give you the logs for the last 60 seconds. I think it is useful to look at journal CTL. There are options for you to specify the date since and the date until. So what is the format you can use for the date? You can check that by doing man systemd.time. So the systemd.time defines various formats that you can use for date and time. So here you can see a few examples of the different ways you can specify the date, time, as well as the time zone. Anyways, let me go back to journal CTL and let me look at the last line in the log. So you can see there is an error that a package management process has been launched in a container. The command is apk and this is the container ID and it is an Nginx container. It would have been helpful to have the pod name here, but uh, unfortunately the people who wrote the rule, they have not included the name of the pod. So we will have to find it out from the container ID. So this container is actually running on the worker one host. So to list the container, I can do CRI CTL PS. So this will give you all the running containers. And uh, if I want only that container, I can either grep for it or I can specify the dash ID option followed by the ID of the container. So this will give me information only about this container ID. And the information includes various fields. And the one that we are interested in is the last field, which is the pod ID. So in the Falco logs, I got the container ID and from the container ID, now I'm getting the pod ID. But what we actually want is the name of the pod. So I can do that by using the CRICTL command and the pods option. I can specify the ID of the pod and this is going to give me the name of the pod. So the pod name is web API dash random string and it is in the namespace team blue. So let me just go back to my working terminal and confirm that. So I'm going to do k get pods dash n team blue. Here I can see the web API pod. So looking at the name of the pod, it seems to be part of a deployment. If I list the deployment, you can see that the name of the deployment is web API and it is it has one replicas. So if I want to shut down this pod, I can just edit this deployment and set the number of replicas to zero. Let's go back to the worker node and see how we can get the output of this command in a specific format. Because I'm really not happy with the format that Falco is currently providing this information. So I'm looking to get only four or five fields. like The time, the container ID, the container name, username, Maybe I will also add the pod name and the pod namespace. So these are five, six fields that I need in the Falco logs. So how do I change that? The log entries generated by Falco are coming from Falco rules. So where are these Falco rules defined? 
the default directory for the falco rules is etsy falco so i'm going to the directory and here you can see a number of files so you can see three rule files in this directory falco rules.yaml is where the base rules are implemented so when falco product is installed on this system it comes with the default set of rules which is defined under falco underscore rules dot yaml as a user if i want to add new rules or make modifications to an existing rule i can do that inside this file which is falco rules dot local dot yaml so since i want to change the format of an existing rule i'm going to use this file but before that let me see what is the rule that is written here so let me grep for package management and you will see that in falco rules.yaml well, let me get the line number as well is it 2431 lines my doubt ah, okay it's a big file so in line 2431 this rule is defined let me open this file and go to line 2431 Okay so this is the rule and this is the output that i'm seeing but i want to override this output i want to include only the fields that are interesting to me now i can directly edit this file but i would would like to think of these as the base product so i don't want to make changes to any of the rules here so i'm going to copy paste this rule into the local rules file right so this is the local rules file copying this then i don't need this file anymore i'm pasting the rule here and let me also paste my expectations so these are the fields that i want we might have some of them already container id container uh, name and user name so i need to figure out what are the falco fields for the rest of them so if you go to falco documentation you can see the event time is one of the first fields so i'm going to take that so the fields that i need now are just the pod name and the pod name space these fields will be under the field class kubernetes so i go to this field class and you can see that it has the name of the pod and the name space so let me put them in a single line let's confirm whether we got what we needed we have the time container id container name username name of the pod and the name of the namespace so this is good i'm going to save the rule i mean if i want i can change the name of the rule and description but it it's not really necessary so when falco finds that a rule matching the same condition is defined in multiple files it is going to take the last file that is defined So what do I mean by the last file? So if you look at uh, in this directory you will see a file called falco.yaml. This is the running configuration of falco. So here you can see falco is actually looking in four uh, different places for the rules. If there are rules with the same condition in falco rules and falco rules local, then falco rules local will be considered because it comes later in this list. So now we have added the rule. One other important thing is if you look at the condition, so this condition is using some macros. This pond process is a macro. But we have not defined a macro in this file. That's fine because the macro is already defined in the falco rules.yaml file. So you can see the macro is uh, defined here. There is no need for us to redefine the macros, so which is really cool. Okay, now I have modified the rule. and i'm going to restart falco let's verify if it's running okay you can see it's running and you can see the start time here as well now let's use journal ctl to view the logs so now you can see the logs are in a different format right so you see the time stamp container id name of the container the name of the user that ran the process the name of the pod and the name of the namespace so this is exactly what we have defined inside the falco local rules.yaml 
So this is how you can investigate Falco logs, match them to containers and pods, and make modifications to Falco rules as you see necessary. In this case, Falco is running as a system service. If you want to run this manually, you can do that as well. But in order to do that, you need to stop the Falco service. Systemctl stop Falco, and then you can just run Falco from the command line. So we're just confirming what we have seen before. So it loads this configuration file and the rules are loaded in this order. And Falco also has an internal web server. Because of this internal web server, you cannot have uh, multiple instances of Falco running on the host because it, it is already binding to this port. So either you should specify an alternate port or you just run one instance of Falco. So once you close Falco, you can see summary of what it has detected in terms of the total number of events, the severity of the events and the rules that triggered the events. So yeah, that's it about Falco.